The way I organize this channel, I come up with an idea for a video. I put together a folder, I put together a script, and I title it and kind of get everything ready for whenever the, we'll say, the passion hits me to start filming and doing the work, uh, depending on what subject I want to work on that day in my spare time. Because this is really just what I do for fun after work now if I'm not playing video games or something else. And what I've had in my folder for a while was one called Why Do Analysts Not Understand Tech Companies? And I think now is the time to do a video about something similar to that. And it's because of the new Google Stadia um, contract AMD1 and the surprise of analysts when it comes to this. I'll be talking about that, why it would be chosen over NVIDIA, and just AMD's prospects in general. AMD won this contract with Google, and it's a big one. They are going to effectively be Google's attempt to at least chip away I don't think they're going to take the console market, and I'll be doing more videos about how I see the next gen panning out with AMD versus Sony, but I think, uh, well, I will say really quick, I think Microsoft should be worried because Google might eat their lunch. There's a rumor that half of Microsoft's strategy moving forward with Xbox will be a cloud gaming strategy. I could see Google doing it way better than them. After all, they already do Bing and a lot of other things better, so don't be surprised if Google beats them at this. Anyways, though, they chose AMD. And if you look at the specs, I need to look at the specs again. I remember them. It was something like 10.7 teraflops, so it's probably an underclock Vega card, and it has 484 gigabytes per second of bandwidth per streaming user. And again, this is Vega cards. And this doesn't surprise me at all. Before I even looked at the specs of this, I knew what Google was doing, and I knew why they choose AMD. And it's because I knew of this card ahead of time. Boom. The Radeon Pro v340 i remember this articles about this card from last year it is a dual vega 56 card that has 16 gigabytes of ram total and there it's kind of, you really should think about this as even more efficient a, a even more efficient dual vega nano there's vega nanos made by power, power color out right now this card had even more efficient lower clocked ones. And the entire point of this card, look, there's not a lot of hookups here. That's on purpose. The idea is a virtualization server. So think about it, right? Let's say you get a dual epic motherboard. So you have, sit right now, right? In the future, it'll be more. But right now, you have 64 cores total. Two 32-core CPUs. That's more than enough threads to run any amount of rendering you need to do. So if you're someone working on CAD or rendering, doing video editing for a company, what you could do is you could literally make one tower, one tower with two Epic chips, and that's 128 PCIe lanes, and octo-channel memory. So you could put like half a terabyte of RAM in there, 128 threads total, and you have enough PCIe slots for both like triple or quad, quad raid PCIe SSDs, and then also like four to six in one, it'd be a large tower, but it's one tower. And you could put like six of these cards in there because most of the time, like my company, for instance, its headquarters have maybe 200 people working there. Maybe 20 people are engineers working on CAD. These CAD engineers, of our 20 CAD engineers, one of these towers is enough for all of them. If they were all working at the same time on one of these towers, they would at least have half of a Radeon Vega card doing rendering for them, which is more than enough for your normal CAD work, um, 3D modeling work, that's more than enough. And most of the time, there's probably two thirds that amount of people working at once, at most. The other people are either off work in meetings, it doesn't matter. And that's the idea. Imagine a, a future where you can scale up and down between these high bandwidth efficient lower clocked cards sectioning off rendering power. And that's the idea. If you're traveling even, you could pull out a tablet and say, I'm going to use half of a Radeon Vega right now and edit this video quick. And that was the idea behind this card. And I already knew about that. So when I heard about this Google deal, I was like, I know why Google chose AMD. They want to use this for gaming, for sure. They want to use these for gaming. Each one of these cards can power two people gaming at 4K. And so that, that that's the point, right? That is the point. Is, is AMD made this product for the future. They know what's going on. Vega is not a dumb architecture. 
It is a smart architecture. Vega was meant to run well in low power laptops. It was meant to run well in when you overclock it for compute, but not necessarily overclock for gaming, although it was capable of gaming okay when overclocked, but not necessarily efficient. It was also meant to be able to do machine learning, AI, um, and, and, and things like this virtualization, um, this subdivided compute workload. Vega was meant to do everything. I know it's not great at everything. It's really only excellent at a couple of things. But it was meant to be able to do everything. And AMD planned to have. They only had enough money for one new architecture between 2017 and 20 and and going even into this year. Navi's not out yet. They knew that. And, and frankly, AMD knew that if Ryzen didn't turn out well. Vega would probably have to be the base architecture for the next, until 2021. And so they needed something that could scale in multiple directions and do everything. And that's what Vega does. And AMD specifically bet on one really good horse when they bet on virtualization in this way. And yet analysts are surprised. And I don't know why. And this is the second part of the video I really want to get to here. On, that I just saw, I don't know the name of the writer, who said, AMD advanced mass delusions. And they look at their bottom line and they say, well, AMD's doing well, but not quite this well. Why is their stock price going up? And then they close a deal like this. And they say, well, we didn't know this was going to happen. We're still good analysts. No, you're terrible analysts. Of course this was going to happen. They had a good architecture that was built to gain this market share. And just get ready for more advanced mass delusions of anti-AMD people in the coming year. And I'm no AMD fanboy, right? I have a NVIDIA graphics card. I only own Intel processors right now. Yeah. Yeah, outside of like one mining ring that has a phenom in it. But... I don't think that counts, does it, people? Um, you know, and but I, I'm just being fair. AMD's killing it right now, and they're going to keep killing it, I think. And it's because they, you know, sometimes pressure makes a diamond out of coal, and they really put in the effort. And the financial analysts just don't get that. And that's why I want to get to the final link here that I think is so funny. AMD perplexes analysts with 12% jump on well-known news. And so that is what is absolutely so hilarious. People ask Lisa Sue here, and I'll have this link in the description. People ask Lisa Sue why, what she thought about this big win in their jump in price. And she said this was a well-known win ahead of time, right? They, they still can't come to terms with the fact that AMD is doing well. It's not, it's about technology. It is about technology. And when I say it's about technology, let me elaborate a little bit here. You can't judge tech companies, and, it, and this is what makes it, I'm not saying it's easy. This is what makes it so hard to be a VC investor or a hedge fund manager working on these Silicon Valley companies that out of nowhere to them, it, it, this is how it seems to these experts. It's like they pull a rabbit out of a hat and it's like this uh, Wigs guy on Seeking Alpha who goes, oh, no one else could have predicted AMD's rise. Wrong. Anyone who understood Infinity Fabric and what happened with the Ryzen 1000 launch knows that you got to buy AMD stock. I'm not, a, I'm not a financial advisor. Don't take my advice. Um, you've got to buy AMD stock because what they managed to do was bottle lightning. They managed to basically nullify half of the problems with upgrading nodes when they went to a chiplet infinity fabric architecture. And it worked well, better than anyone expected, including me. And I expected it to go well. Full disclosure, I held AMD stocks before Ryzen came out, and I still do. I, I guess I, and I've also held NVIDIA and Intel stocks at different times, so please. But when it comes to understanding new technologies, like self-driving with some companies, these are things where you're going to see it again with self-driving, where they go, we couldn't have seen the rise of this company coming. It's not our fault that we said you shouldn't buy this stock. It is your fault. It's 2019. Hashtag learn to code. It's time to at least understand to a certain extent how technology companies work, how silicon works, and why 
you were wrong and you were wrong for betting against amd and you were wrong for betting against a lot of these companies and a lot of these analysts are looking real stupid right now and it wasn't a surprise as lisa sue said this was a well-known win and there will be many more well-known wins thank you Please subscribe, share this video if you think I made a good point. If you don't, I guess downvote it so I know you didn't like this type of a video. Uh, well, don't downvote it, vote it if you disagree with me. I just, uh, no, downvote it if you didn't enjoy this. Um, like if you hated this shirt with the, my dog's face on it, you can downvote that, I guess. But who hates dogs? Also, please join my Patreon. I'm really trying to get that off the ground because Google's monetization is horrible. Thank you.